Okay, today we're gonna do the parametric equations. To be a parametric equation, we're gonna take notes right here. There have to be two equations, one for x equals and one for y equals, and both of these equations are in terms of t, meaning the variable in their equation is t. So how we're gonna do this is they are gonna give us a rectangular equation. Rectangular means it has x and y in the same equation. So which one of these on number one is the rectangular equation? X equals 4x, okay? X equals t is parametric. How do you know it's parametric? It has the t. So we are gonna take this parametric equation. We know that x equals t. Since x is t, I'm going to take that value and plug it in for x. So I'm going to say y equals 4, and instead of x, we can say t minus 7. You would now simplify this. 4 times t is just 4t minus 7. So we've turned the y equation into a parametric. So that is one of our answers. But remember, you have to have two equations, an x and a y. Here's our y, our x was given to us, x equals t. So this is my answer. Number two, so it gave me the parametric x equals t minus four. So I'm gonna take that value for x and plug it in to x. So I'm gonna say y equals three times t minus four. And what do y'all think we're doing with that three? Distribute. So if you distribute, what does it turn into? 3t minus 12. That's our first parametric answer. What's our answer for x? t minus 4. It's the one they gave you. Perfect. Okay, and that's the gist of how you do it. The next one is the same thing. It's not any more difficult. It's just a little more algebra. So when I take this piece for x to plug it in, how many places are you plugging it in? Two, because there are two x's here. So I'm gonna plug it in. So two minus t squared plus four times two minus t minus five. Now two minus t squared, what are you really doing there? FOIL stuff, two minus T times two minus T. It's two of them. So you do like the FOIL, first house and inside last, distribute everything together. I'll do this for you, assuming that you already know how to do it. So it'll be four minus four T plus T squared. That's this first parentheses all turns into when you multiply it out all together. Okay. Now the next one, I have the plus. Let's distribute that four, and what is it gonna say? Eight minus four T, and then you still have minus five. What you wanna do now is just combine all your like terms. We'll start with T squared. How many single T's do we have when you combine? Minus what? Negative eight. Minus four minus four is minus eight. Then you have four plus eight minus five, seven. So there's our y equation once it's simplified. What is our x equation? Two minus t. So hopefully y'all can at least make a 50 by getting the second equation. Okay, it's okay? All right, so now we're gonna do the comments. Turn the page. Okay, first thing you see is this huge chart. You can use this as a cheat sheet if you forget what to do. However, I'm not gonna teach you from the chart. I'm gonna teach you how to get these equations in the chart. So the first thing we need to write down is where these sines and cosines come from. When you have circle and ellipse, those are both something squared plus something squared. This comes from the trig identity, cosine squared 
plus sine squared equals one. Hyperbola though, hyperbola is minus. So I can't use this one that says plus. The trig identity that is subtraction will be using one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. There is no subtraction here yet because I need my equation to equal one like it does for hyperbola. So what do I need to move across for my equation to say equals one? A secant squared minus tangent squared equals one. So we'll be using this guy and this guy to solve for x and y. Number one, how do you know that this one is an ellipse just by looking at it? It's addition. What is hyperbola? Subtraction, okay? So since this one is addition, we know it's an ellipse. And because it's addition, we're gonna make it match cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. You'll kind of see how it matches this squared plus this squared equals one. Okay, if I want it to be just cosine and just sine, the first step is to factor out the squares from both of your fractions. So if I'm gonna take out the squares, the numerator for the X will just say X plus four because now the squared is out here. But if you take a squared out of 25, what does that become? Five, because five squared is 25. So for the next fraction, it'll just be Y on top and the four will become who? Two. Okay, so I just factored out the squares. So what I can do now is say, okay, then that means this first fraction is cosine, the second fraction is sine. So I'll set them equal. Cosine is x plus four over five. Sine is y over two. So here's my two x and y equations. I just need to solve them for x and y now. So if I'm gonna get x by itself here, how am I gonna move that five across? multiply. So I'll say 5 cosine t equals x plus 4. It's still not an x equals because what's the last thing we need to do? Subtract 4. So I'll take that 5 cosine t and subtract 4. There's my first equation. But how many equations do you need to be parametric? Two. So now let's solve for y. What's the only thing we're going to need to do here to get y by itself? Sine, yeah, so two sine p. And that's how you do it. We just practiced ellipse, so I want to change it to hyperbola. Okay, how can I change? What do I just need to change? Let's practice that. So let's just change this problem so we can have practice with hyperbola. So hyperbola's trig identity is secant squared minus tangent squared equals one. What's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to take out the squares from both fractions. Okay, so my first fraction is going to be x minus 2 over what? 3. And then y plus 1 over what, Sasha? 4. Whoa. Okay, so there's my two fractions that I'm going to set equal to secant and tangent this time. Secant comes first, so this guy will be secant. And we'll say x minus 2 over 3. Tangent comes second, so y plus 1 over 4. And now we just need to get them into x equals and y equals. And I like to do it all in one step. So for this one, I'm going to say, okay, x equals, what's going to do, what are you going to do with that three? So three secant t, and then what am I going to do with this two? Plus, so plus two. So I'm just going to kind of do it all in one step. Four tangent t, and Enrique, what are you going to do with this one? Subtract, so minus one. There she is. Parabola is so easy because all you do 
is change x into t. That's all you do. Swear. So I'm going to write the new equation. Y equals 1 fourth. But instead of x, what are we putting? Plus 2 minus 3. How many equations do we need? We have y right now. Who are we missing? So whoever you're missing just equals t. That's how you do parabola. Number 8, this is going to say x equals negative 1 eighth. But instead of y, what are we putting? So t minus 1 squared plus 1. And then this time, what's the second equation we're writing? Y equals t. You got it? It's easy? Okay, y'all do number 9. Get this. Yay. Okay. Is number 10 a parabola? Great. What is it? It's an ellipse. So I'm using cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Let's take out the squares. And Tito, tell us what our first fraction is going to say. On the top. It's one, but Azalea, what's the denominator going to say? Six. Okay, first one is cosine. Second one is sine. Why'd I put plus? And I like to move both P's at the same time. So you're going to multiply by that denominator and then do the opposite of what's adding or subtracting. So for x here, Sasha, what are we multiplying by? So 5 cosine t, and then what, Prince Will? Plus 3. There's x. For y, Brooke, what are you multiplying? So 6 sine t, and then Mackenzie, what are you going to do with that 1? Add it. Okay, number 11. So it's addition. So we are going to use cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. But does this equation equal 1? No. 49. Good. How can we make it equal 1? And do not say subtract 48. And we're going to divide everything by 49. By dividing by 49, this piece, 49 over 49, turns into that 1. And now it looks like what we're used to. So we're going to factor out the squared. What are both of these denominators going to say? 7. Yeah, thanks. Okay. This is cosine. This is sine. And now we have to get x and y by themselves. So Namra, what are you going to do to get x by itself? By doing what? Add, subtract, multiply. What do you do with that 7? Multiply. So 7 times cosine t. But then for y, Daniel, it's going to be 7 sine t. And then what are you going to do with that 1? Minus 1. Okay, we're going to take a break. Okay, now that we have learned how to write the two parametric equations, we're going to go the other way, rewrite it as one rectangular equation. So right here on number one, we know there are two parametric equations because it's x equals and y equals and they both have a t. You with me there? Yeah. Okay, so I need to write this y equation. This one's going to be my final answer, but I need to replace t, okay? 
So we have to figure out who T is. So I'm going to take this first equation and solve it for T. So I'm going to subtract that 3. But that's negative T. Do I want negative T? No. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. So everything changes. Negative X plus 3 is T. So this is T. We just figured out who T is. So I'm going to take that negative X plus 3 and plug it in for the T in our equation. So we'll have Y equals 2 plus 3 and then negative X plus 3. Let's distribute that 3. So y equals 2 plus, well, I guess it's not plus anymore because what is it? When I multiply that. Minus 3x, and then what's 3 times 3? 9. Now I just need to rewrite it in the correct order and combine like terms where we put x first. So negative 3x, 2 and 9 will make what? And now we have a rectangular equation. Y equals something, something X. Okay, where'd I lose you? No. Yes, because it was three times negative X. So the goal here is solve for T, plug it in for T, simplify. So let's do that on the next one, number two. For number two, if you want to get T by itself, how do you get rid of that square root? square it. So t is x squared. So I'm going to take that x squared and plug it into the t in the y equation. So it'll be y equals 1 minus x squared. But let's put it in the correct order where x comes first. So my answer will be y equals negative x squared, then what? Plus 1. I need to get t by itself. So how do I move the 3? Divide. So I take that, plug it in for t. So I'll do x over 3 cubed. When you have that exponent, you have to distribute it to the top and the bottom. So we'll say y equals x cubed over 6. Okay, so that's the normal ones. So we're going to look at the conics now. Okay, so we are going to do everything backwards from what we just did, because you love it. So remember, the deal was cosine squared plus sine squared. So we need to figure out what cosine is, and we need to figure out what sine is. Right now, this says cosine times 3, so how do I get rid of the 3? divide. So it'll be x over 3. This one says sine times 3. How do you get rid of the 3? Divide. Now I can put those back in and do squared and squared. So take your x over 3 squared plus y over 3 squared. And it always equals what? 1. Okay, it's like cosine squared plus sine squared, like we did last time. Now, let's put the squares back in. So this will really say x squared over what? 9 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now, here's the kicker. When your denominators are the same, that means it was a circle. So kind of like we did over here when we took out those 7s, same idea. So sevens were really 49s, and then we put the 49 over here. We divided the 49. So I need to go backwards. I want to get rid of these nines. How would I get rid of the nines? Multiply everything by nine. So we'll just have x squared plus y squared equals what? If I just multiply it by nine, just nine, not nine squared only true if your denominators are the same. Otherwise, you could leave it. If your denominators are the same, 
need to bring that number to the other side. Okay, let's do the next one. So let's solve for cosine, let's solve for sine. Okay, right here, this is two times cosine over two. And then Sabrina, what is sine gonna equal? Y over three. Let's square both of those. Let's do it all at once. So it'll be X squared plus Y squared over what? And it always equals one. Last sine and cosine we're going to try has some extra addition and subtraction. So if I'm going to get cosine, I'm going to take that x, and what am I going to move across first? So add 1, and then do what? Divide by 3. If you want sine, you're going to take y, what are you moving? Minus three, divide by what? Okay, now let's square all that. Cosine comes first, then sine, based on that trig identity. So we'll say x plus one squared over what? Nine plus y minus three squared over what? And it always equals one. These are secant and tangent. They're hyperbolas. So what you're gonna do different is instead of adding them, what are you gonna do? Subtract. The secant comes first or tangent? Secant. So let's solve for secant. So I'm gonna take x, subtract the three, divide by four. Then I'm gonna take the tangent, add the two, divide by three. Now, what are we gonna do with those fractions? Square them. So I'm gonna have x minus three squared over what? And am I gonna add or subtract next? Subtract y plus two, squared over nine always equals one. So when y comes first, what does that mean about the hyperbola? It's vertical, so it's been a vertical hyperbola. Check your answers. Any questions? Okay, do the homework.